What's going on everybody? I hope everybody's doing well today. Welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I'm Reggie Bryant and I help people achieve their financial goals in today's economy. So today I want to talk about the average salary by age, average income by age, whatever you want to call it. I made a similar video to this around the end of 2022. So a while back, I made a similar video, but a lot of things have changed since then. And I really want to address what those changes are and really kind of open your eyes to what the expectations should be when it comes to how much income you should be making by age. So if you're interested in that, hit the like button and just know that this video isn't made with the purpose of having you compare yourself to numbers on a screen or anything like that. This is purely to open your mind and open your eyes to what is going on around you. So first of all, I went through a bunch of different articles just to compare and contrast the numbers. They were the same because they were pulled from the same source, which is BLS.gov. It's the Bureau of Labor of Statistics. That's the end of me using boring terminology for this video, but I'm gonna show you something real quick because this is pretty cool and we should all think about numbers differently going forward after I show you this. So every article I looked at says the word average income, but really they pull the median income, which is more accurate. And, and I'll show you why right now. So what we're looking at right here is a simple bell curve. So the average salary between 2019 and 2020 was $69,392, right? But the median income was $42,800. And that's a pretty big difference. And the thing is, if we look at the bell curve, when we think of average, we think of most people, right? But that's that's not true. That's really if you were to add these three numbers up, so 151,042 and, and 13,000, if you were to add these up and divide them by three, you would get this number right here. And there's a big difference between the three, right? But where most people fall in the bell curve is the 42,800, or that's at least how it was a few years ago. That's not how it is now. Things have changed since then, but I just want to show you real quick. That's if you end up looking at these articles, because I'm going to link them in the description for you to look at yourself. So, you know, I'm not just saying random numbers. If you see the word median, that's all it means. That's where most people fall. Now that that's out of the way, we're going to talk about medium income by age. And just so you know, if you decide to look at these articles that I linked in the description, it goes way more in depth than this. And, and for the record, this is all talking about U.S. income. It's not talking about anywhere else but the US, but it pulls income by age, by gender, education level, occupation, by state, zip code, address, and everything. So if you do wanna check that out, it'll give you more specific numbers. But for the sake of this video, we're gonna jump into this right now. And I got my notes with me today, so if you see me looking down, that's exactly what I'm doing because there's no way I could humanly remember all of these numbers off the top of my head. So between the ages of 16 and 24, in the US, the median earning by age is 38,168. If you're between 25 and 34, it's 56,160. Now, as you can see, we're jumping by 10 year increments here. So there's going to be pretty big jumps between age groups. I just want you to know that before we dive into this more. 35 to 44 is $67,756, which happens to be the highest earning group out of all of these. And then we go into 45 to 54, that's $66,300. And then we have 55 to 64, that's $64,688. And 65 plus is going to be 54,860. And by the way, these are individual incomes. This is not per household. This is by individual. And what I learned from this article mainly was that we saw a 5.4% wage increase within the last few years. And just to solidify that, I'm going to share the numbers with you that I got from the video that I posted a while back, back in December 2022, about how everything looked back then when it came to the median income by age. And you'll see that there's a difference between the two. So back then in 2022, between the ages of 16 and 24, they were making 35,399, 25 to 34 was $53,196. 35 to 44 was 62,504, 45 to 54 was 62,322, 55 to 64 was 60,996, and 65 plus was 54,028. So if you were to average both groups up, like 2024 group to 2022 group, if you were to average them up and then put them side by side, you would see that it is about a 5.4% increase. So when it comes to how much the pay has changed, not a ton has changed in that way. 
But what has changed and what will probably continue to change is inflation. Inflation also went up as well as the wage increases went up. So the wage increases went up by about 5.4%, but inflation went up 3.2%. But we're still positive. We're still a positive 2.2%. And this is the part of the video where your eyes become open because just because you get a pay increase at work or you're making more money, you got a promotion, whatever the case is for you, you can't look at it as if that percentage that you go up by is dead set on that percentage. You also have to think about inflation and a lot of us don't. And sometimes it's out of sight, out of mind. When you're making more money than you ever have, it's hard to really consider the fact that inflation is going up because in your mind, and this is how I, I used to think, in, in your mind, you're just like, well, I make the money anyway, it's all good. But it's not all good when you really, really think about it. And it's not all good because if you spend that 5.4% like it's extra without factoring the inflation, now you're overspending. And that's how people end up in credit card debt. That's how people have a hard time paying off debt as a whole. And that's what makes it so hard for everyone to save and invest. I talk about saving all the time and I give you tips and tactics, but this is the biggest one. Look at your wage versus inflation and then subtract inflation and then the 2.2% in this case, that's the extra money you have. You have an extra 2.2%. You don't have an extra 5.4%. If you look at it that way, it'll become a lot easier to save and then it'll be even easier to start saying, hey, you know what? I'm gonna start investing. But this isn't the full story. I mean, it sounds good to say that in America, we look very, very good in the US. We have a 5.4% pay increase, but a 3.2% increase in inflation. So we're positive. That's not the full story, because once I started getting deeper into this article, you know what I found out? That out of 50 states, only 21 have had a bigger wage growth than they did in inflation. That means in 29 other states, inflation outweighed the wage growth. So it's not even the full picture. And the bigger thing I found to be ironic is that all 21 states that have a bigger wage growth than inflation are places that I have not been to. So the big message behind this video is y'all just gotta be careful. You gotta be careful with your money. You don't need to compare yourselves because once you actually look at these individual numbers, it's gonna show you in this article by state. And when you look by state, the number gets a lot bigger in terms of what the average is or what the median is, I mean. Because the thing we also have to think about isn't just how much money we make per year. We also have to think about where we live at and what the cost of living looks like. How much are eggs? How much is milk? How much is gas? Basic things that we spend money on every single day. How much do these things cost? And when I say be careful, I mean, you have to be careful with lifestyle inflation because you might get a 10% increase at your job. But one thing about it is if you're not looking at how the inflation is looking for your state and you get that 10% raise thinking you're on top of the world and then you add stuff on top of it like, oh, now I'm going to get that Mercedes. Now I'm going to get that designer shirt. Now I'm just going to buy a bunch of stuff and there's nothing wrong with it when you actually calculate these numbers out and you know what you're doing, but when you just do it blindly, a lot's wrong with it because you bury yourself in financial obligation for things that you didn't know you were signing up for. Things that you thought you'd be able to pay off quick. So when you have lifestyle inflation on top of actual inflation, you're through. Think about it. You have 5.4% that you went up in your wages and 3.2% that we went up in inflation. You're only 2.2% up on, and this is just averaging out America. Add lifestyle inflation on top of that, which simply means buying more things, adding more expenses to you, you're through. T-H-U, dude. So pay attention to where your money goes. Don't get discouraged if you're on the lower end of the income and don't be full of yourself if you're on the higher end of the incomes that I listed because you also have to think about what it looks like for your state, for your general area. That's what really matters because that's where the cost of living comes from. Think about your financial plan, how you're gonna save, how you're gonna invest and all that good stuff. And if you don't know where to get started, I just came out with a new series called Wealth Journey Series. 
and it's me just taking you guys through my entire wealth journey, how much I'm able to save every month, how much I'm able to invest every month, what my total net worth is, and the story behind how I got there, because I didn't start from a place where I'm able to just give a platform of 15,000 plus people, that's how many people I have following me on YouTube right now. I wasn't able to give that kind of audience advice of any kind on money just a few short years ago, but I've built this skill daily and I've become obsessed with it to the point where I was able to feel comfortable and sleep at night and be able to save and be able to learn how to invest and then start investing and then make really good investing decisions and watch my net worth multiply over the years. But that didn't come without focus and that didn't come without learning skills to make more money inside of work and outside of work because I haven't just stayed at the same position at work. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I haven't done that. I've chosen the path of getting promoted at work and also promoting myself outside of work to make my own income through this channel mainly. I wrote a book. I've done a lot of things because for one, I don't wanna be average when it comes to average income. Because if you talk to the average person, by average person, I mean the everyday person, money is on their mind. And a lot of times it's in a bad way. It's it's coming from a place of stress. It, it may not be coming from a place of what am I going to eat tonight, but it may be coming from a place of how in the world am I going to pay this off? It's coming from a place of I don't have the money to the side that I need if an emergency were to happen. It's coming from a place of I don't know when I'm going to get out of debt. And I just want you to get to a place where you feel comfortable with money and it's not that I'm trying to make anybody rich in particular. I would love for you all to be rich, but it's not that you have to try to get rich. It's you have to become financially stable, then financially secure, and then financially independent. And one day, when it's time for retirement, financially free. So I say all that to say, stay tuned. Watch my videos. I mean, I have a bunch of informational videos just like this, where I'm telling you statistics and all this good stuff, or teaching you how to do certain things like how to invest, how to save, how to get out of debt. But I'm also broadcasting my own finances in front of the entire world just so you can see how someone else does it. And it can give you a different sense of confidence, a different sense of inspiration because you see someone else doing it. I'm an everyday person just like you. You can see someone else putting this into action. I'm not just talking on a screen from what I think works. No, I've applied this for years and I use a spreadsheet to track and manage all this stuff. So I'm literally putting my money where my mouth is every single day. If you're interested in that kind of thing, stay tuned. And if you want to learn how to invest, how to save, how to get better with your money, how to be financially stable, just keep watching this channel. But that's all I wanted to share with you today. I just wanted to go through some numbers. I mean, I always thought it was interesting to just look at what each age group makes. I always thought that was interesting, but you know, you could, if you want to learn like what the median income is by occupation, by education level, what college degree makes the least, which college degree makes the most, by, by which state the people make the most. You can find all of that in the article. I'll link it down below. And I'll also link the previous article I had in my previous video from 2022, just so you can compare and contrast the information. It's very interesting information. And they all pull their numbers from the same place. The only difference is the year that they got the, the salaries and the numbers and things. And the one I posted from 2022, that one actually breaks it down by how much men make, how much women make. Like it's, it's pretty cool, but I'm not gonna ramble on anymore. That was the video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.